Okay, this is the completed rifle, the SKS. In this video, we're going to talk about why we went with certain modifications. We're going to leave links throughout the video. If you want to see how to do a modification, click on the link and it'll take you to a video of us doing the mod. You can learn whatever you need, whether you don't care about, skip it. You can, we're going to talk about how to recoup costs. Basically, we got this done for free. Right, we recouped the cost, we even got some money for ammunition. Uh, so we'll just talk about how we did that. Now, first off, why we went with the stock was that, well, basically we have AR-15s already. We thought about TAPCO, but um, it's an M4 platform. So we figured, why have two platforms that function differently, two different calipers? Well, let's do something different. Figured a long distance or a longer distance uh, type rifle. There's only so long, now again, before you guys give me shit, you know, 223 is probably a little more suited for the job, but uh, yeah, wind resistance and all that, the light bullet gets bounced around by the wind pretty good, and then you've got the 7.62, which is a heavier bullet, so the weight will drag its ass down, but we're just talking about planking at the range, it just looks cool, cheap to shoot, you know, badass. If there is some Katrina type situation where you've got, you know, people going around looting and raping and, and burning things down and the cops are in on that shit too and you know just total chaos well you can pull this out and scare them out of there they're gonna leave right so but in the meantime it's just for target shooting and fun it looks cool um so we have a yugoslavian sks here you can tell the yugo is because they have the grenade launcher so we're probably going to remove the grenade launcher it's a really long rifle it ha that serves no purpose we'll lighten it up just a little bit and of course, if we lighten it up, well, we might as well uh, put a bipod and add some extra weight, right? Probably get the bipod that attaches onto the bayonet lug. If you want to see how to remove the bayonet, I'm going to leave a link for you now. Now, on the uh, bayonet, if you have the spike bayonet, if you sell it on eBay, you can get about 15, 20 bucks back, recoup some of that cost. If you have blade bayonet, that sucker goes for about 40 bucks. So we sold uh, this one went for 15 uh, plus five for shipping and there we go 15 bucks back in our pocket going on to the stock if you want to know how to remove the stock I'll leave a video for you now a link for you now now the stock we sold on eBay for 65 it was the stock and the handguard that was all so 65 plus 15 80 bucks we recoup back right there we didn't have the original magazines but if you have the original box mag, it goes for about 35 or 40 on eBay. So anyway, we got the Tapco magazines. Uh, these seem to be the most reliable that I've encountered. I'll, if you want to know a little bit more, go into detail. I'll leave a link for you now. Okay, so uh, let's go with the handguard. We'll just jump into it. Some people don't know. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, of course, the... Okay, this is where all the hot gas... Uh, heats up you know hand guard gas tube cover well hot gas right so if you're doing some real real shooting you can melt this polymer down it's not very likely you have to do some real shooting uh, but it can happen you're more likely to fry in the optics you put up here because of the heat um, like in AK if you really do some shooting you know the the gas tube cover will start smoking where the wood starts burning a little bit if you're worried about that you can go the easy way and just sand that shit, paint it black. It kind of sinks in and no one's really going to tell. Do quality work. Don't make it look like shit. But you can just, you know, you, it'd save you the hassle of removing that damn thing anyway. Um, but if you sell the stock as a complete uh, handguard and stock, well, you make more on eBay. But if you feel like doing that, there you go. If you want to see how to remove the gas tube cover, I'll leave, leave a link for you now. So, let's see receiver cover we did not make a video on that it's going to be basically me filing a little bit fitting it filing a little bit fitting you know about an hour or something so i mean just very little at a time figured it'd be a waste to get the idea the receiver cover we sold on ebay got 20 bucks for it it wasn't in really great condition it was kind of beat up if you decide to keep your old receiver cover you just like the stock well you can sell this uh rail mount for about 35 40 bucks if you sell the older just the regular old uh, receiver cover you're looking at about 20 to 30 dollars it came with a four powered scope that we did not use 
With that four powered scope, you can use stripper clips. However, this is a longer uh, scope, higher quality that's just sitting around in the closet from a rifle we sold. And the four powered scope, it, it really, we didn't see much difference between having a scope and not. Um, so we got rid of it, put this better one on here, put it on eBay, or if you have like a 22 or something, just something for planking, hey, why not? But uh, sold it on eBay, 20 bucks, recoup that back. And we also changed out the firing pin. Now I'm going to give you a warning about this. Um, if you, there's two types of primers that some people don't know. There's burden primed and boxer primed. Burden primed is tends to be the cheaper steel case ammunition that everybody likes to shoot. We're talking about Wolf and uh, uh, Hertz or Herders. I forget. I'm really new into 7.62 for myself anyway. And uh, military surplus and, and, and stuff like that your cheaper um, usually steel case foreign made stuff with the burden prime you have a tenant you can have a, a chance a chance to pop your primer it can destroy your firing pin so um, that's one thing to look into if you're gonna get this rifle for shit hit the fan type scenario get the more expensive boxer prime burden prime I've seen it at Academy oh, about 455 bucks boxer primed about Eight ninety nine to twenty bucks. So the boxer will probably run you between two to four times more than the burden primed, but you're not going to have to worry about um, popping the firing pin or the primer and damaging the firing pin. Something else here: the SKS has a it, it has a chance to slam fire if you don't clean out the components. If you don't clean the firing pin, get in there, take it apart, and clean it like you should after you shoot. Gunk can build up in there and cause the firing pin to stick and then you have a full on uh, a, a fully auto rifle on your hands and that can be very dangerous especially if it catches you by surprise so there are upgrades if you put a firing pin with a return spring you eliminate the chance of a, of a slam fire and that's when it goes full auto it can not likely um, to go full auto with a slam fire you're not likely to pop your primers, but like getting struck by lightning, it can happen. All right, this is way more likely, but uh, you know, not super likely. The firing pin with a return spring will solve the problem for slam fire. However, you now have a problem if you use the cheaper ammunition because it can pop, it can break your firing pin. However, whether you have the free floating standard firing pin or the enhanced firing pin, now if you put the enhanced firing pin not only can you break the firing pin you can also damage the firing pin spring so there's two parts that can be damaged now twice as likely for something to go wrong right so if you're gonna get this with shit at the fan put uh, the upgraded firing pin in the rifle and put the more expensive boxer prime and you leave it there if you're gonna use this just for fun um, I would leave the free floating firing pin and buy the cheap stuff and just you know have a blast and you know shit hits the fan and fan it's not really hard to do it if you want to see how to remove the firing pin and replace it I will leave a link for you now so again um, I would say with the money you save with just the regular old free floating firing pin you're good to go I mean the cheap five dollars for 20 that's what's great about the SKS now an SKS is uh, you know basically I guess the grandfather of the AK came out to uh, it was only in service like two years so it's not as rugged and de dependable as the AK uh, but pretty damn close almost as reliable the advantage here is the long barrel the longer the barrel the more accurate whereas the uh, you know AKs are known for semi-decent accuracy um, this guy is gonna have a uh, much better accuracy because that long barrel longer barrel more velocity uh, more accuracy and that's why we went with this thing. So anyway, again, the scope, if you sell it, we about 20 bucks. The receiver cover, the uh, regular, 20. The um, rail, about 30, 35. Your box magazine, if you sell it, about $40. Your stock, 50 to 60. The bayonet, 15 for the spike, 20 or 40 for the blade. So basically, you can get the stock for free and have ammunition. If you guys have questions, let me know and I'll get back to you. I hope this helps you guys out. I hope you learned something and hope it helped you out. You have a good one. I'm out.